Hey everyone, welcome to another episode of the Backyard Horse Enthusiast. Today's special guest is Ali Caraveo from Restorative Strides in Coffee Creek, Montana. Hey Ali, welcome. Hey Tim. Where are you where are you zooming from today? <laughs> I'm zooming from a rodeo today for my daughter. So sitting in the truck while they're cruising around out there. <laughs> so your daughter is competing in a rodeo. Yes. We brought her little, she has a little Arabian horse that we brought today and she's riding barrels and poles. Oh my gosh. So she, she's a little daredevil, huh? She likes the timed <laughs> events. She does. Likes yeah. to go fast. The, the ones that make mom and dad's heart pitter patter skip beats and all that stuff right not as bad anymore it really isn't it's like okay you got this girlfriend so I don't worry about it <laughs> were you a daredevil too on horseback as a kid oh my gosh you know I want to say no but that's a lie <laughs> I totally was um <laughs> So when I was a kid, I used to ride around. My mom always tells the story of how she was sitting in our house and we had this big two-story old house that was kind of built up pretty high off the ground because of the fact that we lived near a creek, right? So it was pretty high up off the ground. The windows were high. And she said there was one day she sat there in her chair and she <laughs> she saw my head going around through the windows and she was really confused because she's like I don't understand why I'm looking at my daughter's head right now <laughs> I was standing up galloping around the house on the back of the horse <laughs> your poor mother <laughs> she oh, just laughs mother. and shakes her head and sits back down and continues whatever it was she was doing <laughs> <laughs> I'll hear the scream if she falls off all right <laughs> Oh my goodness. Where did, so where did you uh, grow up? Um, I grew up in a little tiny town called Happy Camp, California, in the middle of the woods, um, really, really far Northern California. So it was about 20 miles from the Oregon border. Wow. And it sounds like you grew up with horses. Was your mom a horseman? Where, where did this all derived from Allie. So yeah, yeah, it really started <laughs> with my grandpa. Uh he liked to pack in the mountains. That was his love of everything was packing in the mountains into the wilderness. Uh so he did that all the time. And that's where we caught the bug, right? My mom caught the bug there too. She'd go with him when she was a kid. And then when we were kids, we'd go with him too. And and my mom was really happy when I decided I wanted horses too. So oh, that's where. I love it. Yeah. What does backpacking in the mountains like? What are you doing? Are you trail oh, riding? So it, what? So it's actually horse packing. And so what we did is my grandpa had a whole bunch of horses and mules. And so we'd put all of this stuff in on the mules or on the pack horses. And then we had riding horses. And so you'd ride into the mountains where there's only trails to get in there um and so you pack all of your food and camping gear and all that stuff on the back of these horses and mules and go into the mountains and we'd stay for about a week to two weeks usually is about when how long we'd be in there so there'd be you know no outside contact with the rest of the world it's really far remote and amazing and it was it was the best time that we like growing up that was my most favorite thing to do I'll bet it sounds spectacular. Oh my gosh, I love it. Did you have did you have horses on your property growing up or was it just your grandpa? So our his horses were kind of a conglomeration of a friend's horses and she had all of his his pack animals or their pack animals up the creek is what we'd say, right? It was up the creek. <laughs> so, kind of far away from where I was. Um, I think where I was maybe 12 or so when I got my first horse. My mom did get me a horse for the backyard, right? And <laughs> I had one. The one you rode around and standing up, galloping. Yeah. Uh -huh. Yeah. She was rider. in the backyard. Yeah. We had this little orchard out back, little tiny, I don't know. Oh, 
Sorry, my phone fell down. But we had this little orchard out back and um, we put our one horse down there. Somebody gave us this old horse, right? They didn't want it anymore and they knew I wanted one. So she was a gift and she was the best thing for me, you know, on the planet. I rode her constantly. And then when my when I turned 13, I think I was 13. Yeah. My mom actually bought me a two year old that I started training. So <laughs> she was like, here you go. You know, nothing about hor like training horses. Here's a two year old. <laughs> Trial by fire. Trial by fire. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. How did that work out for you? Oh, really, really good. I still have her today. She's still at my house. Um, so she's, yeah, we went and she stayed with my mom for a lot of years. Um, while I was transitioning through life, you know, the young years of life. And then I think when, gosh, the kids were probably, it was probably close to seven years ago. I think I went and picked her up. And so she's been home with me for, for seven years, I think now. Um, yeah. But, you know, training her went well. It was just kind of a trial by error. And I used to ride her all over the place and we do mountain trips. And the very first time I think I actually ever rode her was in the mountains. My grandpa was like, here you go, Allie, just get on. <laughs> we, we rode like 12 miles in the mountains that day and she crossed a creek right off the bat, you know, and just was a really, really good little mountain horse for me. <laughs> wow. The, the best training ever, right? <laughs> yeah. Really? Yeah. Get out is. of the ring. Really Just head out into the mountains. You yep. know, that's Take whatever. Off. Take <laughs> Even off. if you get separated from your horse, they'll find their way home. You will eventually. Yep. Someone yep. will come looking for you when your horse gets there first. Oh yes. my gosh, that used to happen to my sisters and I all the time. <laughs> all the time. We're like, oh, we're in trouble. Oh boy. And then we'd see, oh, here comes dad in the truck. We're really in trouble. <laughs> How'd you lose your pony this time? <laughs> well, <laughs> I can so relate. Oh my gosh. Yep. All right. So my next question, you and your husband, are you ranchers? What, what are you? <laughs> what are we? <laughs> We're a lot of things. <laughs> yeah. Share. Um, yeah, so we are. We do have a small herd of cows here that we run, and we do direct-to-consumer beef sales. Uh, so that means we raise our beef from birth to butcher, basically, and we sell the meat. Excellent. What is your yeah. describe what your what your ranch is like? What what is it like? How many acres? What do you what do you do? Also, Allie. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, so we yeah, right now have 40 acres and we lease 80 acres from the neighbor and we run about 20 head of cow on there. Um, we have two milk cows now also that I have. I love my milk cows. They are so fun. <laughs> um, raw so milk? Do, do you do raw milk? I do. I do raw milk. Yeah. Yeah. Same. It's. I mean, I don't raise my own, but that's. I love raw milk. Yeah. I started milking when the pandemic hit. I trained up, this is really funny. I trained up one of my, um, one of my old cows out of the beef herd. She's half beef and half Holstein anyway. So I was like, I'm going to train my cow during the pandemic so I can milk her. <laughs> and I did. You. She was, she was a pretty old cow, you know, and I just went out there and put a halter on her and started brushing her and getting her used to me and then starting to like rub my way down so I could get used, get her udders and then started milking her after her calf was born. <laughs> wow. I love it. Yeah. Oh, good for yeah. you. Yeah. Wow. That's pretty funny. <laughs> so then we also at the ranch there, we also do um, equine gestalt work. So I do that and I help a lot of women with trauma. I also work with a lot of athletes. And it's 81 degrees, so it's What's the temperature again? 81. 81. Is it humid or are you dry there? No, we're dry. Okay, cool. So you guys, I, you're in your camper. We are recording now. We lost, we had some technical difficulties, which will be edited out of here. Um, 
you're in your camper. So how many, how many days is this rodeo? Oh, it's just for today. We just haul this living quarters trailer with us because it's easier. Um, so we, we hauled my son and his little paint horse. So he has something to do while my daughter does her little barrel race and stuff. And then it's nice to have you know, a bathroom and a place to sit and cool off if we need to. So we haul, yeah. we haul our little quarters a lot of the times. Is this part of the horse trailer too? Is it all one with a horse trailer with living quarters? Yes. Yep. It's Super. all one. So there's a bed and a little tiny toilet and, um, the, there's a fridge and a little stove and I'm sitting at the little tiny baby table and then we can haul four horses with us. Awesome. Yeah. Oh, wow. How often are you doing um, rodeos and stuff, uh, competitions with your daughter? She's really, she's really into this. She is really into it. And actually we just started, so we haven't been doing it very long as far as a bunch of competitions like this. This is our first bigger rodeo that she's going to. Um, we've done a few little local small kid youth rodeo things and, and that's been a fun adventure. Um the kids do working ranch horse competitions at fair every year. So we've been doing that for three years now. Um, and then we tried our hand at mounted shooting. You know, we're, we're starting to get our butt, butts into that kind of world. <laughs> Your son so, must love it. <laughs> eh, I've seen him with his holster. He is a serious cowboy, that little guy. How old is he? He's nine. He'll be 10 in a couple months. Oh my gosh. I wish I could show you him right now. He's outside on his horse. Do you want to see him? Okay. Him and my husband. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> right here. That's really cute. I think oh. you can see him now. Zoom. Zoom in. Oh, I oh we're, we're side yeah. passing. Yeah. Let me see if I can turn it around. There. Yeah. So they're working on some some stuff. Oh, they're trying to get him to stretch out so he can bow down. <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> How old is your daughter, Allie? Um, she is 13. And when did they start riding? um so they started riding i'll turn you back around and can put back down they started riding uh gosh it's, it's, oh, yeah. infant, they, were, infant. They, were, they were young right they were super young um i think that when i brought no they've been riding since they were pretty much born basically we've had horses at the house and um yeah they've been riding for a long time we did when they were colton was four so Kaylin would have been eight and we took a 20 mile packing trip in the mountains with them <laughs> I'm sorry I just I can picture the cyclist people with the little thing on the back right in their shoe <laughs> what did that look like you like strap a car seat on on a no. pack animal no, actually, we had this little pony. I'll send you pictures of it. It's the cutest thing ever. Oh, so gosh. Colton rode this little pony in the mountains. And then Kaylin rode that little white horse out here, Meteor. And um, I rode my my mare that I've had since I was 13. And then my husband rode an old paint horse that we had at the house that somebody had given us. So, yeah, we did it. It was it was super cool. It was a lot of fun. What What an experience for kids. Like... I can't, I, I mean, I don't, well, you, you were the same, Allie, like we grow up with this. I remember I would go to school and I really could not comprehend what other kids without horses did. Right. It made no, I'm like, what do you do for fun though? Like, what do you do? <laughs> I don't, what do you do? Yeah. Yeah. <sighs> I'm so grateful for having that connection and that uh, ability to, to just live completely immersed in horses, you know, that, I mean, look at, look at your kid, look at where you are right now. This is a, <laughs> a, a, a family activity. Yes. It's just so beautiful. And they're not sitting in front of a computer like we are right now. Um, it's, 
<laughs> I, I'm a farce. Um, yeah. <laughs> I'll get my horse time later today. I promise. Right. Um, no, they're they're not sitting in front of technology like they are living. They are experience experiencing. They are, you know, your daughters, both of them. Like they're they're competing and probably competing with themselves to just strive to get better at what they do and do the discipline and the work in it. Like I said, every picture I see of Colton. Oh my gosh. It's so, he is the most serious. Like he loves he embodies cowboy. Like this kid mm -hmm. as an adult is going to be home on the range. I, oh yeah. I would be shocked. I hope we are still friends when, when he is graduating from high school and is like, and there he goes, because I will be shocked if he's like, I decided to become a lawyer, you know, like, <laughs> No, don't yeah, that would do be it. shocking to us too. <laughs> I can <laughs> see it. With how much I have to force that kid to go to school, I highly, 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 highly unlikely he's going to go to to higher education in that. Well, let me ask you. Yeah, <laughs> like let me ask you this about him. is is did you know when you birthed this boy that he was an old sage soul? Like that's totally. what he. In, yeah, okay. Totally. Yeah. 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 I'm not yeah. shocked because yeah. every time I see a picture that you post of him, I'm like, Oh, how many thousands of years have you been around? <laughs> right. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Yeah. He cut his teeth on the back of a horse. Yep. He totally did. And then um, Caitlin too. Yeah. Her too. She's, she's loving all this horse stuff this year. It's been really good. She's, she's really turning into quite the horsewoman. She really is. And, and last year, gosh, when she was 12, barely, she came to us and said, mom, I think I want to do this Mustang challenge. <laughs> and I was like, uh, okay. Do you know what that means? <laughs> she's like, yeah, I've, I've researched it. I've looked into it and I want to I want to do it. I said, okay, well, we're not going to do it for you. Like, I'm not, I'm not training this horse. If you want to do it, you can do it. And she's like, okay, yeah. So, so we signed her up and she got to do the Montana Mustang Challenge um, and got a wild, fresh off the range yearling Mustang and had 90 days to train it so that she could show it. Yeah. Oh, this is another episode. I will oh, be totally. interviewing her. Oh, yeah. I was hoping she was going to come in here so that we could get some in interview stuff done with her because oh. it's incredible what she's done and, and how well spoken my child is and oh my all gosh. the things that she loves. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's incredible. Wow, yeah. So you, she'll be a horse trainer. That's, yep. I stick all of my naughty horses. I stick her on all of my naughty horses. <laughs> I don't blame you. I would too. I'm so jealous that you have her. <laughs> like, you bounce better than I do. You can stick things better than I can right now. You got this girl. <laughs> she just takes it in stride. Like, you know, no pun intended, no, but no eh. fear just goes with it all. That's great. I love it. You let her know there'll be a, there'll be another episode with her starring in that episode. Okay. Oh yeah. Okay. I want videos. Cool. I want pictures. Oh, and totally. I want a sit down conversation with that young lady, even yes. your, your son. Yeah. Okay. We'd love it. That'd be Absolutely. fun. Absolutely. We could do a, yeah. we could do a family one, a family, a family edition. <laughs> that would be super fun. Yes. <laughs> I think it would be fun too. He's got a lot of good info too. He's super excellent. Cool. I look yeah. forward to that for sure. Yeah, me too. So now you, you know, you're, you're, whew, you're emerged. You got 20 head of cattle what a high you got 80 acres you lease plus your 40 of your own is that how much acres you need to have 20 head of cattle um where we're at yes um for sure so certain you areas them. you need a lot more for that many head of cows and certain areas you don't need that much so it just kind of depends on where you're at geographically um but that that is what works for us right now and you're in montana Yep, I'm in Montana, in central Montana, like smack dab in the middle of the state. Okay, so how is that now? We'll bring this part into our interview. 
Allie and I met in Colorado, Elizabeth, Colorado at Little Bit North Ranch. We were both, I was a brand new student in the equine gestalt coaching method program by Touch by a Horse. And you were further along. I don't think so. I think we were about oh. the same. Oh, yeah. okay. Um, was, I think we met at, not foundation. Was it foundation? Corn, cornerstone. cornerstone, which they, they don't have it. anymore, yeah. but yeah, Cornerstone. Mm -hmm. And you and I did a, a polarity piece together. And that was our first like real introduction. And you mm -hmm. always stood out to me, a warm soul. Um, I, I, I was a little bit intimidated by your natural, um, gestalt embodiment, 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 embodiment. Am I saying that right? It sounds odd. Sometimes you say things in words, they don't sound right, but like, you just seem to really embody it. And, and so I, I was amazed at that, like. I want to be like that. And, and we did a great piece of work. I remember that, but I remembered you so, so clearly. So could, because you had an impact on me, Allie, um, Thank because it, it does seem to come naturally to you. And with that being said, since you've graduated and you now have your practice, which is restorative strides. What, what is that all about for you now in your, uh, you know, in your new facility, your new ranch, all of that? Yeah. Um, so I'm actually almost finished up with the master's training program oh. for Gestalt now. Um, Congratulations. Which, thank you. It's really, really been a wonderful, amazing ride. Um, just deepening all of that Gestalt work that that you so kindly said I naturally embodied that yeah. that really is that means a lot to me I do love it and I do feel like I was born to do this type of work 100% like it's it is in me and and it's been really fun to see that those skills or those natural talents come out in in gestalt work I love it um so up here what I do is I actually work with a lot of adolescents in rural Montana and it's a kind of a general practice at the moment I see a lot of everything up here a lot of ranchers farmers um kids that just need a little support and uh that's where I'm at kind of right now with my work um I get to do a teenage retreat for girls at Bonanza Creek Ranch here in Montana with June Boldseth. That's been incredibly fun. This will be our second year that we're doing that one. And um, I've done some work with the Pure Hope Foundation in Texas. And and if you guys look that up, that's a really good thing for, they're a nonprofit down there in Texas and they help women who have been trafficked. So they give them a home. They're kind of a second stage home down there where they get to reintegrate into society. And it's been a really cool program I helped them get their horse program started down there and um just kind of all over the place I just kind of see where my heart is in the moment and see where I go and what what comes up for me and and the people around me and I just kind of love to be there for all of it right <laughs> I'm an adventurous soul and that that shows up in my work too with that adventure part of it well it's perfect for this work the gestalt work that is you yeah. know so in the moment, so experiential. And, and again, and I think probably because you are such a natural, I think that's where my brain interpreted our first interaction doing a polarity piece as you being someone, because you embodied it, that I thought had been in the program for quite a while. Mm, that makes sense. Yeah. You know, my brain was like, oh, she's further along in here. I'm going to look up to her. And I, you know, cause I was so like deer in headlights when at that first exposure at Cornerstone, um, yeah, it, it was a beautiful interaction. 
do you uh, what what types of like coaching do you offer do you do in person mostly a mix up do you do groups you know do you do anything online zoom what what do you offer at restorative strides so I do a little of everything. Okay. <laughs> I love, Beautiful. since I am so remote and so rural, I really do love doing online coaching and phone coaching and Zoom coaching. I enjoy that part of it. That helps me, especially being in Montana, right? We don't have the best of weather in the wintertime. It's hard for us to get outside <laughs> in 40 <laughs> below weather. Nobody wants to go work with horses. So I really, really heavily lean on online workshops and online coaching and phone coaching, especially in the wintertime. Um, and I do offer workshops and I really love having people come to my place. So I have a bunkhouse here and I like to do little mini intensive retreats for people that are private so that they come to the ranch, they stay at the place, and then we do a full weekend or a couple of days if they don't want to do it during the weekend, right? We do a couple of days work of, of intense gestalt. It's like a little retreat and they get to stay on site. And I have this rustic, amazing bunkhouse that my husband and I put together. So they have a place to stay and it's right by the horses and just kind of a part of the family there. We cook for everybody, you know, so it's a it's a really cool welcoming experience for everybody that comes to do that. I love that part of it. Um, so yeah, I do a little of everything. I'm starting out with couples work too. So that's another one that I could do with people staying here at the ranch. And um, gosh, what else do I do? I feel like a lot. Workshops randomly. <laughs> so just kind of whatever, whatever I'm, I'm there for it. That what you felt, right? In the yeah, I love yeah. it. I love it. Why stay, you know, hemmed in by anything? Just like whatever appears like the couples work how, how did that transpire if you don't mind I'm, without you know exposing anybody or their gory details like did you find that you were connected to that and was it is it kind of like based on the beautiful relationship you have with your own husband and your own beautiful family dynamic like well so we actually get trained to do couples work in gcm so I wish I could say it was like all born about all the cool stuff that I do at the house or at the ranch, but it's, it's really truthfully, we get trained for couples work. We do a specific training for it and we get to see how impactful it is for the people involved in the couples work. And then we get to practice it. So it's incredible because it's not like you know, therapy, you go to therapy with couples work and you can go and talk about your problems and you kind of hang on to them for the whole week until you actually make it to your therapy session. Mm -hmm. Where like, this is, is more in depth to where it's, even if you don't have a problem yet in your marriage, this is so powerful because it creates a really deep understanding of who your partner is and who you are as a human and, and helps them helps people connect on a deeper level. And it really helps people, um, understand each other better. That's a, that's a big one, you know, so, is that, that understanding. Yeah. And, and with that being said, Allie, like, how would you begin an interaction as a gestaltist, as a master, you're soon to be a master gestaltist, how, what, what do you set in place so that they do become more aware of each other, have a better understanding of each other? Like, for instance, does a genogram family tree come into play? Does typology come into play? Like what, if I may ask, like, what does that, for any couples that are out there, who doesn't need this, please come on. I, right, think, right. I think every couple should embark on this before they even say, I do like stop, mm -hmm. get to know each other first before you make that kind of a commitment and then end up in disaster a couple right. of years in. Right. So what does right. that look like? I'm coming in. Hey, Allie, I, my, my, partner and I were thinking about getting married. So can we set up a session with you? Yeah. What are we going to do? Yeah. So 
<laughs> it's about 15 hours of work is really what we put in. It's it's a long weekend of deep gestalt work and a lot of different parts come into play, right? It just kind of depends on what's up for the couple. Uh, it really does depend on the couple. So I listen to what it is that they're there for, if it's for connection or if it's for healing or you know, if they're trying to figure out whether or not they want to stay in their marriage, it's that kind of a situation of depending upon where they're at in their relationship, that that really guides the direction of the 15 hours that, that we spend together there. Um, yeah. I'm yeah. sure 15 hours well spent, yeah. right? If you're yeah. think, thinking you want to spend the rest of your life with your partner, do you want the rest of your life to be complete chaos and dissatisfaction? Or do you want to put those 15 hours into a relationship to solidify it so it can be forever after? Like, yep. the, for me, that's a no brainer. And I often, when I, when I am counseling couples that are in conflict, share with them. You know, what or I, I asked, where did you start to see the breaking off? What, you know, at what point in this relationship? And, and explain that when we first fall in love, it's a limbic reaction, mm -hmm. right? It's all feelings and butterflies in the belly and the warm and fuzzies. And my God, the sun and moon, they rise and fall on you. And you can do no wrong. I don't care if. I would, no, I won't say that. I don't care that you burp and you slurp when you eat. It's so cute till it's not, right? So right. you switch into the cortex part of your brain, the thinking part, and it goes, oh my God. I, oh, you know, that cute little right. slurping. Goes, I don't like it anymore. It's getting on my nerves, right? That's when the yeah. real meat and potatoes part of your relationship come into play. So doing this intensive, 15 hours of couples work can, I don't know, solidify all the working parts of this relationship rather yeah. than you just switched out of limbic into now you're free falling off a cliff. Your relationship is. Yeah. Yeah. And it creates a really safe space, like a safe container for, for people, if they're having conflict or if they're unsure of something, I create a really safe space for them to be able to say it out loud without judgment. Um, and it gets rid of some of that residual trauma, maybe perhaps that they might have in their past. That's kind of coming forward today in their mm. current relationship to where like, you know, there's not something specifically that the person they're with now is doing, but maybe something that happened to them is really causing some issues in their current relationship or it really does open the door for better, better communication and better understanding for this couple. Yeah. Yeah. Do you find typically that one of the partners is a little more hesitant to come into it, a little more skeptical? And then what's the difference you see after doing the intensive work? Yeah, there's, there's always, there's always somebody who isn't really on board with it because, they, you know, for one reason or another, I can't really say, put all of that into a box, right? But there, there usually is somebody who's more apprehensive. Mm -hmm. um, and then after they go through the process, generally, they come to a better understanding together. And they usually stick together longer. They have more understanding. Um, there's, there's a lot more trust and love and joy that comes out of it, too. Sure. Sure. And, and probably a different awareness about people in general and how they yeah. show up in the world and how they um, approach others, hear others, a um, little more compassion. Compassion. That's the word. Yes. There's a lot more compassion that comes out of it for sure. A lot more compassion, understanding and all of that. Yeah. Cause I think 
what I see, and I'm sure you do as well, is when you see conflict in a relationship or conflict, well, anywhere, right. a lot of times it's, it's the adult child showing up mm -hmm. and not understand. And that is triggered and just, yeah. That's, that's who's showing up for the fight. And, you know, once you gain that awareness around who is showing up and can do some healing work with who's showing up, the yeah. trigger doesn't have as much gas, doesn't have as much right. fuel any longer. There's, you, you yeah. don't jump into your limbic part of your brain. You, you start to recognize it. You thank the trigger for showing up. You say hi, but right now adult me needs to to be the one in charge, driving the bus, okay? And uh, it's a a much more peaceful way to interact in in relationships and in society. Oh, a hundred percent, yeah, it is. Mm, it's beautiful. What it what's coming up on on uh, restorative strides? not so distant future any retreats what's what's going on um right now i have a teen retreat coming up um which we're booked up full so that one i'm doing in august um uh, it's actually a free retreat that we put on for for girls around montana so uh there is a nonprofit that sponsors us and it's called montana horsepower so they're it's June Boldsus, a uh, nonprofit that she's put together for her retreats that she does up there at Bonanza Creek. And it's a, yeah, really, really cool nonprofit that she has. And actually this retreat that I'm doing, there was, it was like the brainchild of this 16 year old girl that decided she wanted to do retreats for these girls that are in her community because she saw the need for some space for healing and she reached out to June and June reached out to me because I work with more teens than June does and um it's turned into a really amazing thing so now now the 17 year old girl this year right is is running the show and I'm there to help and to facilitate some of it. And she's facilitating a lot of it. And uh, then we're going to do like equine gestalt sessions with the girls and all this stuff. So it's really incredible. It's really incredible. It's called breaking barriers is the retreat that we're putting on. Okay. And um, yeah, June sponsors it with her 501 C three of Montana Force mm -hmm. of power. So if anybody has a love for, helping teen girls. I know that June could use some more funding there in her, in her nonprofit. Beautiful. Uh, so what we'll do is we're going to put all that information, contact information, website information, your contact information, everything into the description box below this video. So if anyone yeah. is interested in, in donating um, or coaching work or retreats or anything, please do not hesitate to reach out to Allie or even June. We'll have her information in that description box as well. Um, wow. That's beautiful. Now, will that take place on June's on her ranch? Yeah. So it's going to, and her ranch is incredible. She's got these wonderful cabins up there that she can house a bunch of people at and just amazing, amazing view from her lodge and this great, like you could see over the mountains and the valleys and it's, it's stunning. And then she has horses there that we can ride and work with and all that fun stuff. So she's got, she's got quite a nice setup up there. Beautiful. Oh my yeah. gosh. Well, we'll yeah. make sure we have all that information that we can share yeah. with our viewers. Wow. Uh, yeah. Yeah. It's really a cool spot. And then the other thing that I'm doing this year is I've partnered with um, a photographer here in Montana and we're doing a retreat in September. Uh, I think the dates are 26th through 28th that we're doing a retreat down here in Winifred, Montana. <laughs> it's down in the Missouri breaks. It's beautiful down there. There's this really pretty ranch down there that we're going to stay at. And the photographer is offering like boudoir sessions or goddess sessions. If, if people aren't comfortable doing like a boudoir photo shoot, she does like an outdoor goddess session. So like these really empowering 
moments of capturing women, right? So she wanted me to come down and do some empowering workshops with, with the women too. So I'm going to be headed down there to do that. Um, so I'm this excited. is her retreat? It's actually her retreat. Yep. And I just get to come down and do a little bit of work and, and all that fun stuff. So I get to partner down there and oh, do a few sessions, which will be cool. Some workshops. That's wow. What yeah. fun. And also, you know, to get to do the, the work that you love to do in such a yeah. beautiful environment that is yeah. so empowering. Yeah. Wow. Oh. I want yeah. to go. I know. <laughs> Come on, Kimber. We'd love to have you. We have some space left, right? So it'd be I'll super bring my fun. own tent. <laughs> bring your own tent. It'll be great. <laughs> oh my gosh. It sounds <laughs> heavenly. And I'll bet there's a lot of women who've never in their life been able to have a photo session like that. Where, I mean, honestly, you're, 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 confidence much must soar to be able to put yeah. yourself in that it, what would typically be a vulnerable state but this is done in a, such a safe setting and mm -hmm. oh that that just sounds so intriguing and like I want I want to do it you know I want to do it before I'm 70 <laughs> right right <laughs> for the first time ever in my life <laughs> <laughs> You know, I mean, gosh, I was a musician back in the day and sure I've had lots of photographs done of me and all of that, but it's, it's, it's different. I think you are so self-conscious. It was at a time in my life when I was anorexic and not healthy. I was not emotionally yeah. healthy nor physically healthy and how cool, you know, to be in my sixties and do something like that. And oh my gosh, yes. You know, like, no, we're just beautiful. We're beautiful people. Exactly. We have nothing to be ashamed of. Nothing at all. And I think that's that's the beauty of this weekend. I would love to have you. You should come next year. I if will. Can't make it oh my gosh. I'll put it on my calendar. And yeah. what a beautiful opportunity because okay, let's think about it. You've got women from all walks of life, probably different generations, age groups. Imagine the things. My God, Allie, the fact that mm -hmm. you're gonna be there as a gestaltist to provide support because that situation is going to open up a lot of things for these women. It yep. has to. Oh, it does. Yeah. And the photographer, that's why she wanted me there was to help with some of that. I know she, she does a great job of setting a really safe container for those women who've all come to see, you know, the other women who've come to see her for pictures, but she's, you know, said that there's stuff that comes out and how amazing would it be to get rid of that emotional charge or to like work through some of that trauma that you might have and then go get your picture done in oh a my really gosh. empowering, beautiful way. Like it's going to really be such a powerful weekend. Wow. Like, oh my gosh. Yeah. Yeah. That's amazing. How did you, this, were you friends with her? How did you, like, how did she even know, like, I need to reach out to someone because these things keep coming up in these photo sessions for these women. Actually, um, small town, Montana, right? We all kind of know each other. Um, I didn't know her before and had never met her, but my nail lady, <laughs> my nail lady. <laughs> With your hairdresser too. And then <laughs> it was actually my new lady who had said to this lady, um, to this woman, you know, you should reach out to Allie and see what she has. I think what she does is really important and powerful and you guys might mesh really well. And so I started following her on Facebook and she has a, uh, like a private Facebook group and and she posted something about this women's retreat that she wanted to do. And I reached out to her and said, I, hear, I actually think this might be really good for me to come down and be a part of if you're open to that. And she was like, oh my gosh, yes. <laughs> and wow. so then we started planning some of this together and she's got, you know, the big stuff taken care of. And I'm just kind of there to help her 
bounce ideas off of that she, as they come up or questions she might have. And then I told her, I said, I'll be there for support the whole weekend and I'll do my workshops and one-on-one -on -one sessions if anybody needs them and just be there as support. Wow. That's beautiful. It's, oh yeah. my gosh. What did it's going to be more than a, a photo session for these women. This is going to be life changing. Yeah, I agree. I agree. How smart of you and what gumption you had to just speak up. Yeah. And make the offer to, you know, I bet you're going to do a lot more than one. Right. Yeah. 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 It's already in the works to continue for next year. So we're planning on making this a yearly event. So it'll good. be good. Good. Yeah. I, I won't be surprised if you get such a, a draw that there's going to be waiting lists. So you're going to be like, okay, now we have point one point two, one point three. Right. <laughs> you know? no, I mean, again, what, a, what an amazing experience to be able to go in there, get your pictures done, have this beautiful photo session, and then be so in touch with all those things that are coming up for you and then target them right there in the moment, right? That's what gestalt work is. You're right there and like totally emerge from that retreat. So full of, co of confidence and awareness and just a different person on a really beautiful level. Wow. That's beautiful. Yeah. Yeah. Dang girl. <laughs> <laughs> my brain is spinning i'm like i don't know some photographers i don't you're do like let me try this one <laughs> I won't do yeah. This. yeah it's gonna be it's gonna be powerful that's for sure that's for sure yeah so after that what are you most looking forward to after that what am i most looking forward to um Every year I do an online uh, look back, look forward. I call it look back, stride forward. And I do it every year online in January. And I love that. It's a six week group that I do. And we meet for two hours every Tuesday is usually what we do. And um, that one is my favorite thing to do over the whole year because it's, I've got like this group of women who love to come back to it. Sometimes we get new women come in, but it's a really cool way to look back at the past year that we've had and we get to know each other really well and we're cheering each other on. And then we get to look forward to the next year and kind of help us plan what we're doing for the following year and, and help, help them dream, you know, like, what do I want my year to look like? Where do I want to go? And, and, and the looking back process is really important for that too, because it helps clean, clean up the things that we've experienced in the, in the previous year. I love that one. That one's my favorite. <laughs> is it a closed group? Are they the same participants that show up every year? Does it, how does that work? So it's actually, I wouldn't call it a, I mean, it's closed, but not closed, right? So whoever registers for it is open, but they are registered for the full six weeks. So it sometimes is a few people and sometimes it's a lot of people. It just kind of depends on who wants to join us that year, but it's a lot of fun. It's a lot of fun. I mean, I have people from all over the States that join us for it. It's pretty cool. I love it. Oh, yeah. Beautiful. Yeah. Well, we're nearing the top of the hour, my friend. Yeah. Is there anything you'd like to add that I haven't asked about or you'd like to touch on before we close this episode? Anything I want to add? <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. I feel <laughs> like we've covered a lot. Um. No, I don't think so. I think that we've covered a lot. Right. And I look forward to having the family back on for, for some episodes. Same. <laughs> yes. We fun. will. Let's plan that. Let's get it on the schedule. Let's hey, get it. You got to, you got to check in with the fam and find out what their schedules look like, you know, right. Barrel racing, backpacking, oh, like there's God. always something going on. I'm sure. In your there's always something. Oh, I'm training a mule. I have to tell oh. you that. <gasps> tell me I need pictures too <laughs> I will so one of the things gosh I've always 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 wanted my very own riding mule because my grandpa used to pack mules all the time and I loved them 
And so I've seen people riding their mules and I'm like, that's the coolest thing ever because there's not that many riding mules out there. There's a lot of riding mm -hmm. horses, but mules are a different story. <laughs> <laughs> and so this winter, there was a mule that came up for adoption and he's a seven-year-old mule. And I was looking at this adoption site and I'm like, oh man, he looks perfect for me to try to train to to be my riding mule you know and I I showed my husband and I just kind of scrolled on and was like whatever gosh I don't think I need another horse in my life or another equine in my life right now and my <laughs> husband was like last word. I know right and then oh. my husband says oh you should probably just get him because <gasps> because you're never gonna be able to get one for that price you know and <laughs> I was like oh my gosh I guess I go get my mule and so I put in my application and, and I got chosen right away. They were like, yes, we want you to take him. And um, his name is Sam, Sam Mule. I love it. <laughs> and he came with that name and he is so funny. I just put um, a couple of rides on him now and I've actually had my daughter ride him and he's going to be really cool. I'll send you oh. some pictures of him too. And I tried, oh, I tried to have him be a client like be a client mule it does not work for him because he is my mule he doesn't like to be around other people I mean he he does but he doesn't like connect with other people he's like no that one's my human and I'm gonna stick with her <laughs> so he doesn't do the work very well <laughs> oh well but we we let them choose right yes yes we do and I'm really excited for that because that's like the one that's like my own. We have a whole giant herd of horses, right? We have, we have 10 now and, um, he's mine and I love it. You know, the rest <laughs> of my care with other people and this one is strictly my mule and I love him. It's beautiful. Please provide <laughs> pictures. We will share with the audience. <laughs> Samuel. Samuel. <laughs> that's beautiful. Uh, well, Allie, thank you so much for this time with you. Thank you for sharing. Yeah. I look forward to sitting down with your entire family and hearing about Kaylin's adventures with the, the Mustang makeover. Like that's no small feat. And what was she 12 when she did it? How, you know, I mean, well, yeah, yeah. geez, oh man, barely 12. You raise, you're raising some tough ones, girl. Yes, they yes, get they their do. grit from their parents. <laughs> yeah, they do, for sure. I love it. Well, thanks again. Thank you, Kimber. And we'll talk soon. All right. Well, my friend. Thank you.